I just want to again tell you how proud we are of you. And today, as we celebrate our 206th anniversary of our independence, let us remember we're a prosperous people and a strong people because we're a free people. Well, God bless you all, and a happy 4th of July. Now, here they come. Here it comes. Happy Fourth of July, and you know this has got to beat firecrackers. Well, that certainly was a, an exquisite sense of timing, you might say, well planned. The president singing God Bless America, leading the crowd in the song, just as Challenger, the next in the line of orbiter spacecraft, goes soaring by on its way to the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, Florida, and eventually it, too, will follow Columbia into space. Well, we still have a little more to report from Edwards Air Force Base, more about space, so our coverage of Space Shuttle Columbia will continue in a moment. And a moment ago, we saw a rather impressive sight, Challenger, the newest of the uh, orbiter spacecraft, a uh, piggyback, on, and here it is again live. Uh, we still have uh, pictures of it as it uh, zooms through the skies above California's uh, Edwards Air Force Base. Piggyback on its way now to uh, the Kennedy Space Center in Cape uh, Canaveral, where it will join the ranks of the orbiter spacecraft. Uh, Challenger is very much like the other spacecraft uh, that have preceded it, uh, Columbia, but there are some differences, and Ken Kashiwahara has prepared this report on the newest of America's space shuttles. While Columbia was racing through space at 18,000 miles an hour, America's newest space shuttle was inching its way from Palmdale, where it was constructed, to Edwards Air Force Base, 35 miles away. Although Challenger appears identical to Columbia, there are differences. The new shuttle is the first to be certified operational, meaning it is scheduled to fly 100 missions before a major overhaul. Challenger also sports fewer heat shielding tiles than does Columbia. During construction, technicians cover the two rear engine pods with a heat-resistant fabric instead of the black and white tiles. Inside the Challenger cockpit, the ejection seats have been replaced by airline-type crew seats, and there is space for five additional seats, a galley, and sleep stations. And finally, because engineers use different materials in some spots, Challenger weighs 2,000 pounds less than Columbia, meaning it can carry a larger payload. Challenger now sits atop a 747, and right after President Reagan's speech this morning, it will be ferried to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where it will be prepared for its first mission early next year. Well, as we know, the Challenger is on its way to Cape Kennedy, and incidentally, Challenger, like the other shuttle names, derived its name from an historic American sailing ship. But Challenger was also a name used on another American space mission, and that happened to be Apollo 17, and that happened to be commanded by a guy named Gene Cernan. Gene, do you remember that? Sure do, Ken. It's uh, been a very moving day here today, and I guess about all I've got to say, uh, from my point of view, is God bless America. Gene, uh, I would second that. And Frank, for those who want to know how you how you make an encore after a day like this, next 4th of July, Challenger, that very same orbiter, will take off on the first night launch. Frank? Uh, that will be even more spectacular. Well, thank you very much, Gene, and thank you to Lynn and Ken Kashiwahara and Jules Bergman, uh, who's been uh, watching the entire mission at the uh, Space uh, Flight Center in uh, Houston. Well, that's just about it. Uh, Columbia has landed after seven days, one hour, nine minutes, and 40 seconds in orbit. A perfect picture book landing. We'll have more on the flight of Columbia 
uh, on the Sunday World News tonight, later on today with Tom Gerald. And also, we're inaugurating a new broadcast tomorrow morning to bring you overnight developments. It will be called This Morning with Steve Bell and Kathleen Sullivan. And that will come on tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Time. So that's it for now as far as Columbia is concerned. As the president said, the astronauts, Mattingly and Hartsfield, have given the American people a 4th of July present to remember. This is Frank Reynolds in Washington.